dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Logger's Camp Logger's Camp is balanced for characters of 3rd level, though characters of 2nd level can survive the perils of this quest if they are cautious and clever. Characters of 4th level or higher should have an easy time dealing with the threats to the camp. Location Overview Years after the eruption of Mount Hotanau, the city of Neverwinter continues to rebuild itself after the destruction wrought by that event. Loggers have set up camps along the river that flows out of Neverwinter Wood, using the river to transport logs to the city. One particular camp, located on the south side of the river, is run by a craven opportunist named Tybor Wester, the half-brother of Phandalin's townmaster, Harbin Wester. Tybor employs skilled loggers to find the best trees, chop them down, and haul them back to the camp to be sent downriver. He gets his supplies from Phandalin, so that he doesn't have to pay the outlandish devastation tax that Neverwinter applies on essential goods. The challenge lies in getting the supplies safely through Neverwinter Wood, which is why Harbin uses adventurers to make deliveries. Tybor has a bigger problem than supply lines, however. His loggers have drawn the ire of the Anchorites of Talos, who resent intrusions to their territory in Neverwinter Wood. The Anchorites have hidden a totem in his camp that has attracted ankegs. The burrowing monsters caught the loggers by surprise, killing all twelve of them. Tybor survived by locking himself in his office where he intends to remain until someone rescues him. Quest Goals To complete the Logger's Camp quest, the adventurers must deliver supplies to the camp and must have Tybor Wester sign for them. Tybor's signature assures Harbin Wester that the supplies reach their intended destination. Preparations The characters need to pick up the supplies for the Logger's Camp before setting out. Harbin Wester has made the necessary arrangements with Barthen's provisions in Phandalin. When the characters arrive to pick up the supplies, read aloud the following. Barthen tells you that his clerks have filled two crates with supplies as he hands you a sheet of parchment, upon which is written an inventory of the crate's contents, foodstuffs such as dried meat, blocks of cheese and loaves of bread, as well as casks of ale and flasks of oil. The two heavy crates are loaded onto a two-wheeled cart, pulled by an ox. The ox's name is Vincent, says Barthen. I'll expect to see him and the cart returned, thanks. The ox, used the cow stap block, is a reliable beast. Each full crate holds enough provisions to sustain 12 people for a month, as long as the supplies are supplemented with fish and fresh water from the camp. If the characters tell Barthen that they intend to visit Falcon's hunting lodge on the way, Barthen suggests they buy him a bottle of fine wine for ten gold pieces and give it to Falcon as a gift. Travel to the camp The characters can travel 24 miles in a day, and the logger's camp is roughly 50 miles north of Phandalin. The characters will need to take a long rest near the halfway point of their journey. They can choose to camp in the woods, or veer eastward and spend their long rest at Falcon's Hunting Lodge. The party members with the highest wisdom survival modifier is the most qualified to navigate Neverwinter Wood. Use the map of the Sword Coast to chart the character's progress through the forest. Whenever the characters enter a new hex on the map, have the navigator make a DC-10 wisdom survival check. If the check succeeds, the party stays on course. If the check fails, the party gets back on course after wasting 1d4 miles of movement going in the wrong direction. A boring encounter. Shortly after entering the woods, the characters have an encounter that is not what it seems. Read aloud the following. About 60 feet ahead of you, a wild boar stands in a small clearing. The boar glares at you suspiciously. The boar is actually a female anchorite of Talos in boar form. The anchorite, Drethna, attacks only in self-defense. If the characters circle around the boar or otherwise avoid confrontation, they can continue on their way. If the boar is spared, it darts off to warn the anchorites at the woodland manse that strangers have entered the forest. Arrival If the characters follow the river from Falcon's hunting lodge, they arrive from the east. If they come straight from Phandalin, 
They approach from the south. When they arrive, read aloud the following. The logging camp spread along the south shore of the river, where a dozen tents are arranged on a sandy beach. Near a dock stands a cabin, with logs stacked under an awning. Older cabins close by have been torn down to leave only stone chimneys and foundations. A grim silence hangs over the camp, and you see no one around. The ankegs hide underground and rely on their tremor sense to detect prey. They burst out of the ground in the squares marked ankeg eruption on the map when certain conditions are met, as described in Area L3 and Area L6. If you're running this scenario for one character, only one ankeg can be encountered at this time. Camp Locations The following locations are key to the map of the logger's camp. Area L1 Cabins on the rocks. These cabins have been mostly torn down, but their ruins stand atop a 10-foot high escarpment of rock that the ankegs can't burrow through. Area L2 Old Cabin and Chimney All that remains of this cabin is a ruined fireplace whose chimney has mostly collapsed and a stone foundation that ankegs can't burrow through. Totem a character who searches the chimney finds a totem buried in its debris. Thirteen tiny androgynous stick figures dipped in pig's blood, inscribed with tiny lightning bolt symbols, and tied together with a bundle of hair. A character who succeeds on a DC-15 intelligence religion check can discern that the totem's purpose is to bring ill fortune on all who reside near it. Destroying the totem causes any ankegs that haven't attacked yet to lose interest in the camp and burrow away. Area L3 Office and Tool Storage This cabin has a wooden floor and is divided into two rooms. The larger room is cluttered with logging equipment, saws, leather harnesses for climbing trees, and so on. An ankeg is hidden under the floor. The first time a character crosses the room, the ankeg bursts through the floorboards in a square marked ankeg eruption and attacks. Tybor Wester, a human commoner, has barricaded himself in a small office to the north. He has pushed his desk against the door and huddles atop it. When faced with any decision, Tybor makes the most cowardly self-serving choice. Area L4, the river dock. Rowboats and river barges can be moored here, though there are none present when the characters arrive. Area L5, north camp. A dead campfire surrounded by six tents, each containing a bedroll and mess kit. Further inspection reveals that the tents and bedrolls have been partially dissolved by some kind of acid spray. Footprints and strange marks in the sand suggest several humanoids were attacked here and dragged away. Any character who succeeds on a DC-10 intelligence investigation check can deduce that the humanoids were killed and dragged down into the sand by burrowing monsters. Ankegs collapse their tunnels behind them, leaving no way to follow them. Area L6, South Camp. This camp is similar to Area L5, but three ankegs are hidden underneath it. When a creature steps within 20 feet of a square marked ankeg eruption on the map, a hostile ankeg bursts out of the ground in that square and fights until slain.